you're always uh, heating with wood heat, wood and or coal at this point, because they use both. Usually this, this heater's big. It's about three and a half feet long, but about three feet wide. It was an old shop heater somewhere, and I picked it up second hand. But it does a great job for this house, because once it heats up, the slab underneath heats up. We've got a pretty good amount of uh, radiant heat coming out of the concrete. So, but the thing was terribly inefficient. It's still very inefficient, but there's a few things I did to it to help. Down the sides, uh, if you can see, there's some tubes that are welded into the sides, and they're put on a one-inch grade, so they actually kind of run like an X. When I first put this in, we didn't have electricity, so I didn't have a way to power a fan or anything. We're living entirely on a solar panels and a generator. So by putting those on tilt and the grade, hot air rises, so whatever heat is produced in that pipe would automatically run out either side. So that was one way that made the efficiency a little bit better. Another way was that I ran pipes from the back to the front, capped them all off and bored a bunch of holes in them, so I made it uh, kind of a crude catalytic system. So I have a slide valve in the back that I can open and shut on a slide rail, and that allows air to get to the top of the fire instead of the bottom of the fire. When air is running up through your fire, it burns really hot, and really fast, and it'll burn up all your fuel. On top of those pipes inside, I put plates. So what I essentially had made the fire do is where the fire is burning any actual box, it has to smoke has to travel to the front of the box, go over top of the plate, and then go to the back of the box going across my heat exchanger tubes in order to get to the chimney itself. Now, you're not really supposed to tie two chimneys in together. This is more for aesthetics. We have the old wood cook stove in the back over here. And so in the summertime, I'll hook that pipe up so it looks like it's hooked together. But in reality, it's not. That's why I keep this T uh, capped off. If you're going to do something like this, this is a trouble spot to pay attention to. So a lot of chimney fires happen where there's a lot of wrapped expansion and or hot and cold mixing together. <coughs> so what happens is as soon as it comes out of your box and goes into the thin wall pipe, there's going to be a cooling effect in your smoke that's going to soot up in this section through here. Once it hits the ceiling, it hits that double walled insulated pipe, then it's going to kind of neutralize in its temperature, and then the next spot you're going to see a lot of soot is way up on top. Now, if you're out here in the west and you burn a lot of pine, you're going to have a lot of creosote build up in certain areas throughout your chimney. So next I'm going up top and actually sweeping it all out. You can do it from down below, but what I've found, uh, the best technique there, <laughs> it's terribly nasty and dirty. I've taken a duct tape tarp around the top up here at the ceiling and then pretty much made like a big shower curtain effect and then stood in here and shook the rods and the brushes up and down. So it's terribly dirty. I would heap rather on a good sunny warm day. I'll climb up on the roof and do it from up top. Save myself the trouble. So what I'm about to do right now is, like I said, there's plates installed in here. I made those plates so I can take them out. Because if I don't take them out whenever I shake the stuff out of the chimney, it creates a nice big pyramid and plugs off my chimney. So had I not been thinking ahead when I put those baffle plates in this thing, I would have had to build myself some special tools to get up in that chamber and uh, try to clean that mess out. So, <clears throat> I'll bring the camera level down here to lower level and let you go with me on this one. Mind you, it's terribly dusty. I like seeing this real fine powdery ash because it means I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping my heat regulated to burn correctly. But when you start seeing this flaky stuff, 
this is what ends up being your chimney fire right here and that's where it hot and cold is mixing together and it creates this char and that's what is going to be up in the chimney here very quickly you grab a flashlight and I'll show you those heat exchanger pipes and uh, then we'll crawl up on the roof and have some real fun hey up there in the upper section you can see you partly see those heat exchanger pipes going back and forth and you see all how they're very crusted up and you can probably also tell a little difference here on the bottom bottom is fairly clean of uh, ash and soot whereas in the upper portion of the chamber up in there it's not so there's one indication of heat exchange hot and cold is going to lead to the, the soot so all right so the probably the most dangerous part of being up here is actually getting up here with the snow and everything i literally had to sit here with my feet in the sun for a few minutes and let them dry out before actually trying to walk across this tin roof it uh <laughs> A lot of injuries happen each year from people trying to clean their chimneys out. You pull a Clark Griswold very quickly and go right off the end of your roof or your extension ladder collapse and etc. 20 foot fall off a roof is not very fun. But either way, here is the actual top of the stove pipe. This is where most of your hot and cold expansion and contraction is going to take place, thus creating the condensation, which is going to create your actual um, soot and coke and whatever you want to call it. I cut this one out years ago so we got more updraft and was hoping it wouldn't choke, coke up near as much, but it has actually continued to do so the same. <clears throat> Each one of these chimney pipes is going to be appropriately sized. If you have an 8 inch pipe, you need to get an 8 inch brush. And if you have a 6 inch pipe, you get a 6 inch brush. I don't think they make <coughs> Like I said, get enough rod to reach your entire chimney all the way down. Sometimes it helps to have somebody watching at the other end of the pipe to make sure the pipe doesn't fall off like it just did in my case. I wedged it in the top of the stove, picked up on it, and that lower section of pipe fell off. Came with it and then fell off. So I got a mess to clean up downstairs. Par for the course, though. much I just let this fall pick it up when I get down below it saves me having to drag it off the roof green cap back on so if you're thinking about going to wood heat it'll save you some money but it'll also give you a a lot more uh, work to do in a lot of cases so if you're short on time but you have a decent amount of money to heat your house with gas or <clears throat> electric or whatever else it may not be for you for us out here it's kind of a necessity uh, a lot of people think a state with no uh, income tax and you think the cost of living is kind of low no it's 75 miles to the nearest Walmart for us and when you get down there you sometimes depending if you're in South Dakota or if you're in Wyoming South Dakota's got a food tax, they have a sales tax, Wyoming just has a, a, a sales tax, neither state has an income tax, but when you're running 75 miles one way, that's 140, almost 150 miles round trip for a grocery run. Uh, forget about trying to find a McDonald's, you guessed it, 65 miles in one direction, 75 in the other. So, like I said, wood heat ain't for everybody, but for us it's kind of a necessity. 30 below zero at times and 70 mile an hour winds, Trying to heat a house with uh, gas or uh, electric is uh, going to run you through the roof. Let's go downstairs and fix my pipe and uh, clean out the rest and <laughs> sweep up the mess. So let's climb down off here without doing a Clark Griswold. <laughs> uh oh, crikeys. Well. that stopped for now. It's pretty nasty. I already grabbed the other pipe and ran it outside. We'll shake this one out and be right back.
Okay, back in business. Scoop my ashes out of the stove itself and we'll call it good after clean this mess up. Time to open some windows, turn some fans on, and get the smoke out of the house. So, not quite a catastrophe. <laughs> and it usually doesn't go this bad, but uh, we'll be good for about another month or two. And then we'll get to do it all over again. So, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.